Hello everyone, welcome into the playoffs. This episode, we're going to go through the complete playoffs for the Raiders franchise, and then we're going to go ahead and look and watch a little bit of the Super Bowl and see who's going to go home a champion today. Let's get into this one. As you can see, the Jets knocked off the Bills 24-10, and then the Cincinnati Bengals beat the Baltimore Ravens 28-25, even though their defense gave up 422 yards of offense. Next up, you have the Jacksonville Jaguars beating the Los Angeles Chargers 20-17. This was a pretty even matchup, and the Jaguars scored 10 points to come back and win it in the end. Next up is the Cowboys against the Cardinals, and the Cowboys do knock off the Cardinals 20-14. And then it's San Francisco blowing out the Eagles 31-10. The Eagles need to reevaluate their plan nowadays because it does not seem to be working well. Then it's the Rams knocking off the Vikings 24-7. That game wasn't really that close. The Vikings offense couldn't get going. Let's get into the next round of the playoffs here. It's the Jets knocking off the top-seeded Kansas City Chiefs 33-27. That is a shock and not something I wouldn't have seen coming. And then you have the Cincinnati Bengals beating the Jacksonville Jaguars 47-21. That's a blowout. Once again, I did not see that coming. We'll have to see if Cincinnati will be able to get on to the next round here. Atlanta, who is the one seed, just fell to the Rams, 35-31. Does Matt Stafford have another run left in him? He might. I don't know, though. We'll have to see if he can keep this hot streak going. Now let's see who he's going to take on. As it's going to be the Niners knocking off the Cowboys, 21-14. So it's going to be Niners-Rams in the NFC. That could be an interesting matchup. And I'm excited to get into the championship games as it's the Cincinnati Bengals knocking off the New York Jets 24-17. So the Bengals are headed on to the Super Bowl with a fantastic offensive performance. Let's see who they will take on in the Super Bowl as it is going to be the Rams knocking off the Niners 28-21. The Rams have been incredible in this postseason. So they're headed to the Super Bowl. And now that I think about it, they actually have a rookie quarterback. It's no longer Matt Stafford. It's Childress, one of the QBs we passed on that just led the Rams to the Super Bowl to take on the Bengals and Joe Burrow. What an impressive run from a rookie quarterback. I really would like to see if he could keep that up. I don't know that he'll be able to. Rookies don't win the Super Bowl as a quarterback. I don't think it's ever happened. I don't even know if a rookie's led the team to the Super Bowl. That's pretty impressive. Now let's take a look at the Pro Bowl roster here. So far, we haven't really seen anybody from our team on here. That's not that big of a shock. We didn't have a fantastic season from anybody. Maybe you could argue Devontae Adams, but he did finish the season on injured reserve, so he wouldn't be able to play in the Pro Bowl anyway. He's about the only guy, and a three-win team isn't going to get too many people to the Pro Bowl. It's not like they're going to excite anybody here. I mean, we were pretty disappointing all around. I thought we were going to have a better season than that, and the pressure's on to have a better season next year. We all know that, you know, as a coach, you're not going to get many opportunities or a GM to keep building a team if you constantly fail. So we got to be smarter and have a better year next year. And I do think that we're going to make some major changes this offseason. So you guys are going to have to, you know, pay attention for that in the next episode. It's going to be huge. And I plan on blowing this thing up if everything goes right and we get the opportunities that I hope for. We're going to blow it up and we're going to start over. We're going to get a ton of young guys and we're going to be aggressive to try to make this team better because I don't know how many more seasons we have left. And honestly, I want to win. I'm sick of losing. It's very, very frustrating to lose. There's nothing fun about it. So I hope that we can fix it and we have a better year next year. Looking at the league MVP here, it's going to be Lamar Jackson winning it all. Of course, we don't have anybody in top 10. That's not shocking. Looking at the AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Lamar Jackson. Defense went to Von Miller. Rookie of the Year went to Dwight Harden of the Patriots and David Scott of the Bills for Defensive Rookie of the Year. Lamar Jackson won Best Quarterback. Austin Eckler at Best Running Back. Rasheed Rice was your best receiver. We had Adams come in second place. Ronnie Stanley won Lineman of the Year. Von Miller. Defensive lineman of the year, TJ Watt, linebacker of the year. Best DB went to Trey White of the Bills now that he's finally healthy. And best kicker went to Ryan Suckup of the Dolphins. He was fantastic for the Bucks. For the NFC, it was a pair of Cowboys leading the way for offensive and defensive player of the year in C.D. Lamb and Micah Parsons. A.J. Childress, the rookie quarterback for the Rams, did win offensive rookie of the year. And then Ahmad Burley, who was a pass rusher for the Cardinals, ended up winning defensive rookie of the year. And you could see the rest of the NFC awards in the background. Jadavian Clowney had a rebound year, though, winning best linebacker. That's something I wouldn't have expected out of him. And seeing J.C. Horn win best DB is pretty awesome because he's been extremely unhealthy throughout his career so i'm happy to see him get a little bit healthier we're taking a look at jacory and bennett here who got an upgrade to star dev as we're in super bowl week that's nice and will possibly help him in the future and you can see jacoby myers fell to star dev that's pretty disappointing i thought he could should have kept a superstar but i guess being injured and not having the best year i'll do that to you 
Taking a look at the you know, teams here in the Super Bowl, as you can see, it's rookie A.J. Childress leading the way. The Rams have a pretty good team. I mean, their offense looks decent so far, and I think their O-line could be a little bit weak as they don't have any stars so far. An 80 overall, 83 overall right tackle, and Rob Havenstein's their best guy. That's kind of disappointing and a little bit of a worry for the team, but the Bengals do have a good pass rush, so I think that's something that could actually end up affecting the Rams more than they hope. And I do think they got a little bit lucky because they their defense outside of like Aaron Donald isn't that good. So I don't think they really should have made it to the Super Bowl, but hey, they have a chance and their offense looks pretty good, especially their skill positions. So we'll see if they're able to knock off the 99 overall quarterback and Joe Burrow. They still have Joe Mixon, who's a beast. They still, of course, have Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and Tyler. Boyd and then they added Quentin Acosta who's really good they have Noah Fant at tight end Orlando Brown is a really good left tackle Karras is a good center Kappa is a good guard and then they have Jackson Carmen at right tackle now that's a weakness and something that a team could attack I always talk about listening to podcasts and one of them is move the sticks with Daniel Jeremiah and Bucky Brooks well on that they talk about tomato cans and the problem for the Bengals is they have two tomato cans in their offensive line group so that means Aaron Donald and them guys will be able to just constantly attack them so if the Rams come out with a good plan that'll really hurt this high-flying Bengals offense in my opinion because those are severe weaknesses on this team so we'll have to see how it works out as they're going to be at Jerry World and AT&T Stadium and I think my prediction you know I do know the result but I will say going into this game I thought the rookie quarterback wouldn't be able to have a good game so I naturally thought the Bengals were going to win we'll have to see if that's what happens I'm not going to tell you guys until the end we're going to watch a little bit sim some we'll jump back in later and we'll see the Super Bowl celebration either way we're going to start this game off with the Rams offense and AJ Childress he has 30 touchdowns nine interceptions 4,200 passing yards. That's a great year from the rookie quarterback, and he's going to start his day by passing quick out there to Cooper Cup. That's going to be a seven-yard gain getting this Rams offense moving. They go to Cam Akers on the ground, and Cam Akers gets a first down, cuts, jukes, and Akers has some space all the way out to the 50. What a carry there. I guess they marked him down at the 48. I was a little off there. Either way, they go right back to Akers. Akers jukes again, and Akers is down to the 36-yard line. I think he could have marked that one at 35. What a great carry. The Rams look fantastic as that's a check down by A.J. Childress to Cam Akers, who refuses to go down on first contact here today. However, there is a penalty, and it's going to be holding on the offense. So that is going to take that play off and make it first and 20 for A.J. Childress. And that's his first mistake. That was a terrible pass. I don't know what happened there. Second and 20, Childress throws it quick underneath. That's Cooper Cup holding on. It's going to be third and 15 from the 40-yard line. Get some yardage, attempt the field goal. That's the best thing they can do, and that's a terrible decision. That's going to be an interception by Chidobio Wuzier, and that is exactly what you worry about a rookie quarterback doing in the biggest moments, making a huge mistake as Joe Burrow comes out onto the field with 4,300 passing yards, 32 touchdowns, and 10 picks. That's an all-pro type of season right there as they go to Jamar Chase for a big 27-yard pickup to begin their day. This is going to be a high-flying offense. I can already feel it as Burrow's going to check it down here. That's a nice move by Joe Mixon. He steps out of bounds, but that's still a two-yard gain. Play action for Burrow, and he's going to take a shot down the field, and he has another receiver open. That is T. Higgins, who remains on the Bengals. So it's now first down and 10 from about the 14-yard line. He's going to check it down underneath the Noah Fant at tight end. That's a solid eight-yard gain. They're at the six-yard line. Burrow going underneath. That's Fant getting a first down, and that's going to set up a first and goal from the two-yard line for the Bengals. And they got backed up. It ended up being a false start, so Burrow has to pass here. He checks it down, and that's a nice, powerful reception there. They pick up a few extra yards, getting them back to the three-yard line as they go to Mixon here and Mixon stuffed. It's going to be third and goal from the three now. The Bengals are going to have to pass. Burrow looking, looking, firing, and that was nearly intercepted. That was a mistake. They are lucky that it was dropped by the Rams. So they settle for three. Evan McPherson drills the field goal, and the Bengals are going to take a 3-0 lead here. Let's get into our sim. We will come back to the gameplay later on, or if they get in a real interesting situation, it looks like the Rams are driving here. They might be able to get some points. They convert that. So we're going to check in on this drive. They're at the 35. It's a check down underneath. That's a short gain for their tight end. I'll be honest with you. I don't know who it is off the top of my head. So they are going to hand it off here. That's Cam Akers getting a few yards, setting up a third and five now at the 30-yard line. A.J. Childress has to pass. Childress firing it down the field, and that was tough coverage. It was nicely played by the Bengals defense, forcing the Raiders to have to settle for three. And the kick is going to be up, and the kick 
kick is going to be good. The Rams are going to tie this one up. Three all, and we're in the second quarter now. Let's see if the Bengals can score on this drive. They get the ball. Burrow, they're moving a little bit. They lose three. It's going to be a punt. That means the Rams will get the ball back here. Let's see if they're able to answer as Childress is passing the Van Jefferson for 12 there. They get four to Akers, three more to Cup. Third and three, they get 14 to Jefferson, three to Cam Akers. Then it's an incomplete pass. Third and seven, and they get it, I think, to Chase Claypool there. That's a seven-yard gain. They actually don't, but they go for it, and Higby gets the first down. So now we're going to jump into this game, and it's Cam Akers getting stuffed. It's going to be second and goal at the six-yard line. They're going to hand it back off to Akers again, and Akers got bottled up. He fought ahead and picked up four, but it's now third and goal from the two-yard line, and there's a penalty. What is it? It's going to be false start. That's going to back the Rams up and possibly put them out of the range to get a touchdown. It's going to be a little tougher as they pass, and I was wrong. That's an easy touchdown. That is going to be Traquan Smith getting the score. I thought he was a tight end earlier. Turns out he's a receiver. I didn't realize who it was. So they got four minutes to answer here. Let's see if the Bengals can do it. They're driving the ball pretty quick here. They get, they're getting a lot of chunk plays here. It's third and one. Burrow incomplete. Fourth and one, and Mixon picks up seven. So it's a three-yard run by Mixon here. Now they're coming out of the two-minute warning, and it looks like Burrow's going to pick up 10. Minute 35, and it's going to be a 23-yard score to Jamar Chase. The Bengals tie it up. So minute 32, can the Rams answer and take the lead before halftime? That's a good drive starter. Then they get a penalty pass drop. That's a big mistake, but they do get 10 for Higby. And then Childress misses on a fourth down. They punt it. How do you punt it in that situation? Go for that. Terrible play call, but it's the third quarter now, and the Bengals have the ball to begin it. Let's see if they can retake the lead here. They're moving the ball decently here with Chase and Mixon getting a bunch of carries and receptions, but that's Aaron Donald stepping in and getting a sack, bringing up a third and 11, and they get 28 to T. Higgins. That's a huge play. They're down to the 19. Let's see if Joey B can punch him in. That's a great play to Noah Fant. That's going to get him a first and goal from the two-yard line. Burrow looking to pass, feeling pressure, checking it down. Joe Mixon, and he's bottled up at the five. I guess they mark him at the six. So now it's third, second and goal from the six. They're going to hand it off, and that's a touchdown. Seaton Carter, their fullback, goes in for the score. The Bengals take a 17-10 lead over the Rams. Let's see if the Rams can answer, and if rookie quarterback A.J. Childress has enough composure to lead them back in this game as they're failing miserably on this drive, but they end up punting it. I thought they got it. They picked up 13, and it ended up still being fourth and one, which is Madden's favorite thing to do and probably one of the most annoying things to me that they do. So the Bengals are moving the ball here pretty well. It's second and seven. They get eight to mix in. They're across midfield. Then they find Tyler Boyd for 26, and we're going to jump in with three seconds left in the third quarter. Burrow firing it underneath. That's Noah Fan or Tyler Boyd, sorry. Holding on at the end of the third quarter, it's 17-10 Bengals. They're dominating today, truthfully. They have 100 yards more of offense. They're just a better team, I think. But it's third and six from the 13, and Burrow checks it down underneath to Tyler Boyd. That's going to bring up a fourth and three, and I bet the Bengals settle for three. Evan McPherson's kick is up and good. That was like a 25-yard field goal or 35-yard field goal. No, it was actually a 27-yard field goal. They were at the 17-yard line and 10 yards for the end zone. I had a slow moment there. Let's see if the Rams can answer here in the fourth quarter. They're moving the ball decently well, but then Trey Hendrickson gets the sack. But they pick up 15 to Cooper Cup, so it don't matter. Cam Akers gets one, second and nine, five more to Higby, third and four. Incomplete A.J. Childress. Let's see if they settle for three, and they do. Riley Patterson drills it, makes it a 20-13 to 13 ball game. The Bengals get a touchdown on this drive, and I honestly think this game might be over, and they can celebrate their first Super Bowl victory ever. But the Bengals are here, first and 10 at the 41. Let's see if they can punch it in. That's a nice carry here by Joe Mixon. I, I mean, I guess not really. He only picked up one. It's second and nine. Burrow looking to pass. Burrow on the move. Burrow makes a huge mistake. You cannot do that. Run backwards, lose a bunch of yards, and take yourself out of field goal range. It's third and 21 now. Joey B's got to get a big play. Feeling pressure again. He's on the move, and he throws it away. He took points off the board on that drive. That's a big mistake by Joe Burrow in the Super Bowl. You hate to see that as A.J. Childress is on the move, and look at that. He throws it away. A rookie quarterback knew to get rid of it. So second and 10 now, Childress. He has an open receiver, and I thought he was going to get that one, but it was a little bit too on a line. He needed more arc on that last pass. It's third and 10 now, and Childress just checks it down. The Cam Akers picks up four. 
If I'm the Rams, I might go for this. And they surprisingly punted. I do think that was the wrong decision. I'm not going to lie to you. You're giving the Bengals a chance to close this game out with two minutes and 30 seconds left. I could be wrong, but to me, I go for that. Is That's a check down to Noah Fant. That's only a four-yard gain, but that's a good carry to begin this drive. Minute 59 left. They hand it off, and Joe Mixon gets the first down. The Rams got to use their first timeout. One more first down, and this game's over. Mixon, nice carry. So second and six. Mixon again. Going to get the ball, and Aaron Donald stuffed him. So now it's third and six. They go back to Mixon. Mixon bouncing around. First down, Bengals, and they're going to become your Super Bowl champions with that carry right there. As that's Joe Burrow taking a knee. He's going to get to celebrate and hoist his first Lombardi trophy ever. I'm actually excited to see that. I thought a storyline of seeing a rookie quarterback win the Super Bowl would be cool, but Joe Burrow is one of my favorite players in the league. I just enjoy watching him. I like his attitude. I like his style. And, you know, Jamar Chase is such a fantastic player. I know Joe Mixon's not there anymore, but it would have been great to see him do it with the Bengals. And I don't know why I just realized I never mentioned this was a Super Bowl rematch. And Matt Stafford won his first Super Bowl against the Bengals. And this time it was the Bengals coming out on top. I don't know why that totally slipped my mind. I can't believe it's the first time I mentioned it. That had probably the greatest halftime performance of all time during that Super Bowl with Snoop Dogg and Eminem and all them guys in there. That was that was sweet. Evan McPherson, the Gator legend, sitting on the sideline instead of going into halftime. Maybe him going into the locker room this time is what led to the Bengals actually winning the Super Bowl. As you can see, Joey B pumping his fist with the Lombardi Trophy in hand. Either way, let's go ahead and just quickly show off the stats for this game. I think the... Bengals didn't end up dominating on the scoreboard as much as they actually did during the game. I feel like they really did control this game throughout. They fell behind a little bit. The Rams got hot early, but the, overall, it was just the Bengals' offense was better. Joe Burrow had a good day, almost 300 yards passing. Mixon was good on the ground. Burrow added a little bit on the ground. Through the air, they weren't explosive, but Jamar Chase made a big play, got a touchdown. T. Higgins had a couple big catches. I think T Tyler Boyd, I think, actually had one pretty big catch, too. So, I mean, they were just explosive all around. Trey Hendrickson got a sack. Awuzie got a pick, which really did come in handy. So, as we're looking at the NFL playoffs, you can see it's the Bengals coming out on top this time over the Rams in this Super Bowl rematch. So, what we're going to do for the rest of this episode is show off stats and all that for around the league for our team. You can see Russell Wilson had a pretty good year, 24 touchdowns, 9 picks. He had a 54% completion percentage, which wasn't great, but he had passed for almost 3,400 yards. On the ground, we suck. Damian Harris had 500 yards, 4.4 yards per carry. Devin Singletary was meh. Now, the thing is, I did get rid of Josh Jacobs, so we don't have any of his stats for our rushing stats when we look at him. But overall, our rushing attack just wasn't good this year. Through the air, Devontae Adams had a great year, 110 catches, 1,368 yards and 8 scores. Mayer caught 10 touchdowns on 1,118 yards on 75 catches. Myers only had 612 yards and two scores. I guess that does explain him dropping his dev trade a little bit more. I don't know why I thought he had way more yards than that. You know, he really didn't have a good year, truthfully. So it makes sense why he's no longer a superstar player. He earned it after last season, and then this year, he just disappointed. And that's just how the NFL works sometimes. Guys can cycle their way up and cycle their way down real quick in the superstar ratings. So let's go ahead and take a look at our defense. We had 115 tackles for Diablo. We had over 100 tackles for Trayvon Morig as well. Max Crosby had a decent year. Looking at TFLs, he had 22, 19 for Wilson, 18 for Diablo, 12 for Akeem Davis Gaither. I mean, that's pretty solid. I'll take that. We had a decent defense this year. I do feel like, obviously, they're not great, and they gave up a lot of big plays. We need to improve our secondary. I think getting a number one corner is one of our top priorities this year because I think a better corner would also improve our pass rush, which, I mean, we didn't have any high-end sack getters, but we did get a decent amount of sacks this year. I also think we need to strengthen up the middle of our defense. I like DeMar Cox, but I think a number one D tackle would really make an inf a difference for this team. I think getting a star there would help us so much. I think it would help our linebacking core, which is weak, and I do think we need to turn that over as well. But the problem is, who's going to be available? That's always the question I have. And when you look at free agency, it's not always reliable. Not only can you not get the guy, there might not be anybody good on, on free agency at all. And at that point in time, you're stuck with what you have. I would like to replace Divine Diablo, I think. I just don't think he's big enough to play linebacker effectively in the NFL. Could be wrong, 
But I feel like we need to change him out. And I also feel like Robert Spillane needs to be moved out, even though he doesn't play a whole lot. And I think Akeem Davis Gaither is another player that we might end up needing to address as well. He's decent, but he's not great. I could see him being a starter. We did sign him in free agency, so I could see him lasting a little bit longer. But I just think this team needs a roster adjustment and turnover. I think at the receiver position, we're pretty solid. But I think maybe getting somebody young to come in to develop and look to replace Devontae Adams in the long term would be a smart decision. I think at running back, we need a new young guy to come in and step up and hopefully be a star. Losing Josh Jacobs did hurt our offense a little bit, even though I don't think he was great at a lot of times. I think at quarterback, you know, we don't have our answer there long term. Russ played well. But I don't want to start Russell Wilson next year. He's going to regress, and he's just not going to be that good at the end of the day. So it's time for us to go ahead and work on getting a new quarterback in here. And I expect to do that with our high draft pick. Um, if we don't take him at like five, which is where I believe we pick, I maybe I'll trade up and get another first round pick or something because I just we need a quarterback. I have a couple that I like. I have one that has elite throw power, and the only concern I have is his accuracy is a little bit hit or miss in Ray Hobbs, but he has elite throw power, and that to me is something that I crave because I feel like every time we've struggled at quarterback, it's been with a weaker arm guy like Aiden O'Connell, and Russ, I didn't turn the ball over as much because he had a little bit better accuracy, but his accuracy wasn't even that much better than what we had before, you know. Malik Willis had the stronger arm, but he had terrible accuracy. And I think this quarterback is like Malik Willis with the stronger arm, but I think he's going to have more accuracy than Malik Willis. I do think it's still going to be lower than Russ, so it is going to require some development. But with a stronger arm and slightly better accuracy, I think we can get a lot of good play out of a quarterback. So I have my eye on him. I'll admit he's not the top quarterback in this class, but... I don't know. We'll see how that ends up playing out. I think tight end, we're pretty much set with Michael Mayer. I don't think we need a Brock Bowers to come in and compliment him. Across the O-line, you know, we could definitely use some upgrades there. I'm not going to try to pretend that we're solid and steady and ready to go. We'll see what happens. It's not my top priority. I'm not sure I'm going to take any O-lineman in the first round. And if I take maybe a guard or something, it'll be in the second round. I'm starting to wonder if we need to replace our starting center. Isaac Baldwin, he just can't stay healthy, and that to me is a red flag. But he'll probably get another season starting and see if maybe he's healthier next year and if he plays better. We'll see, though. That's one of them decisions that's going to be a tough one. I'm hoping to get a guard in here. And for this position specifically, you can find guys later in the draft, but I also feel like you can find old linemen in free agency a little bit more than you can in real life. And even if they're an older player, I think I'd be comfortable bringing in an older guard if they're in the 80s to help our team out because I just think it makes the most sense and it's like D-tackle that's the other position where I want to get a veteran in here I'm okay with playing a 34 or 33 year old guy who's like an 82 overall that's okay I think we need that help for this team and I think we just need to get better because I'm tired of losing and truthfully I mean we've gotten through just a couple seasons here at the end of the day we haven't moved quick enough so Next season, I'm hoping we can start to compete because we only have a limited time left on this Madden cycle. I will say part of it is I find this game super frustrating to play, and I'm going to adjust the sliders in the offseason. I always use Matt 10, so that's what it's going to be. I'm just going to update them again if there's any updates because they haven't been updated since the last time I brought it up. And I also will admit I played this game like probably a month ago, and I haven't played Madden. I don't think I've played Madden since, truthfully. I think uh, we'll see what happens. We did the off season, and basically I finished up the regular season, did this, did the off season all in one day, and then I did the preseason, which I don't think I'm going to include. And then a few days later, I actually played the first game of our next season, and I haven't picked up Madden since. So we're going on like three weeks or a month. And by the time you guys see this, because Madden right now is in the background. It's not my primary project. I need to finish up the Coach KJ series, so that's why you haven't seen a lot of Madden videos, and I am sorry about that. I haven't probably played this game in a month, a month and a half, when you guys actually see this video come out, so I could be pretty rusty. We'll see. I'm working on getting a new setup. I got to see if I have my financials in order to be able to do it, and also, when you guys see this video, there's a strong chance that I'm going to be out of my job. 
Um, I mentioned it in some other videos. I'm going to become a stay at home dad. And that's going to provide me the opportunity to, you know, raise my daughter, be around my daughter, which is what I'm very excited about. And it'll also give me the opportunity to put out more content because there's just going to be some time in the morning. So I'm going to have the availability to basically just create more content, which is going to be good. And I'm glad to be able to do that. And I'm happy for the channel. But after Coach KJ ends, Raiders is going to be the primary franchise until the next college football game comes out in July. So there's going to be a few weeks where it's going to be pretty consistent Raiders. And I think I'm going to also speed the Raiders franchise up. The first few episodes will be single game episodes. And then after that, you may not even see highlights from a game. You might just see me showing you the end of game stats. Either way, I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a great day. And we'll be back with the offseason very soon. Have a great day. I'm out.